Hello, I'm currently studying a film and TV degree, as I thought this could be the way for me to get a job within the film and TV industry. However, as my time as a student comes near to a close, I don't think I'm fully prepared for the big wider world and the competitive job market within it. And I imagine many other people are in the same position as me, a bit stuck, a bit confused on how they're actually going to break in. So I'm making this short documentary for myself and other people that are in the confused position of where to go next, knowing the challenges of how to break in and how to act when they do initially start and what can help them hit the ground running. So I got in contact with three different people at different stages of their careers and with differing amounts of experience to help educate us on how they manage to break in, what to do and what not to do, as well as how to make it in an industry that's quite glamorous but also quite elusive. Uh, my name is Phil Stewart. I have been in the industry a couple of years um, and I'm currently an apprentice production coordinator for Sky. My name is Anya Baltrop. I've been in the industry for about three years now, um, kind of on and off mixed with travel. And my last role was second assistant director on quite a big reality TV show in Australia. Um, my name is Jay Finlayson. I'm a I'd admit it, I'm a unit manager for Amazon Prime feature film. Can't tell you the name. Previously, I mostly do assistant location management and location scouting. And I've been doing this in the industry about seven years now. As you can see, there's an interesting mix of people with quite a range of experience. I believe getting a range of people with different levels of experience can be useful in understanding how opinions differ depending on how experienced someone can be. So what was your first official credit and was it difficult to get and how did you get it? When it comes to the first proper production uh, that I was credited on, although I don't know if it's an on-screen credit, but I certainly was on the call sheet um, and that's uh, Professor T. That's the ITV drama that was on uh, last year. And I was a COVID runner for that for a couple of days. Um, prior to that, I'd done... Uh, a week as a runner for NFTS on a student production. In Norfolk, there wasn't a lot of work going around, so it's not like you could just contact production companies. Um, I stumbled across my first one, which was the NFTS one, on a Facebook post that had been posted on the wrong group by mistake, and somehow I managed to stumble upon it, and I thought, oh, well, I'll just email. And they went, oh, yes, that's great, because you're local. And that was that was great. And then... After that, I was looking at Facebook groups um, and occasionally something local would come up. Okay, so I was 23 when I had my first role. It was on the TV show, The Crystal Maze. I was the office runner and I did some talent running on there. Um, and I got it through when I was finishing at the Bottle Yard Studios, my role as a receptionist. Um, I knew someone who knew the production company there and they got in touch for me and I got hired onto the show. I started off as an extra in 2015-ish. I was like, like 21. I, I was covered in tattoos. I was um, into like skateboarding. So I was requested to be in a, like a needle exchange in an ITV drama. I kind of got talking to the crew and I ended up annoying them. And I ended up becoming a runner on a few things. And I fell into locations by accident. Is it true that everyone starts from the bottom as a runner and works their way up? I wouldn't say everybody does, but the vast majority do. Um, it is, it's also a very good idea to do it at least once, um, simply because it's a good way of understanding how, how a production works want to work in the production in the shooting section if you want to be a first ad or whatever or director or any form of actual you know production then yes yes be a runner because that way you get to know all the departments how they all fit together and and understand the process i think it's a really good thing to have experienced but i don't think it's necessary for everyone i know for example one of my very close friends did a um a course to be an assistant director and became an assistant director straight afterwards you start off at the very bottom as a winner you can work and work and work and work and finally you get to where you want to be with a lot of work but there's some people who are lucky that know someone in the door already and they get brought on as an assistant and everything i was talking to a guy called Jeez. He was an art. He was an art assistant for the BBC, 
but his friend was the prop master. So he got in quite like straight into the art department, not as the art runner, but as the assistant props and assistant deco. From their answers, it's quite obvious that the most popular way and mainstream way of starting within the industry is through a runner position, either as an on-set runner or office runner. However, some people don't go down this way and find themselves specialising in a certain area, either through a specialist course or training, or they can just simply know someone who's already experienced in a certain sector, and they just get experience from them. So whilst being a runner is seen as a good way to start, it isn't the only way. Did university help prepare you for working film and TV and was it an effective way to break in? To university, I, I we weren't really shown that much. Um, I did a, a sort of more academic degree in, in film and television studies as opposed to production. Uh, so the, the film process and all the departments and all the people and how it all fits together, uh, I, I didn't know. No, and I think probably this question would be better suited for someone who obviously studied film and TV as well. Uh, for me, I studied social anthropology, which was amazing, and I think it gave me a really good, I guess, foundation for life. Anthropology and those kind of humanitarian subjects don't always necessarily lead on to a direct job afterwards. So it did, it prepared me a lot in terms of just giving me a better understanding of life, but in terms of life on set and whatnot, I wouldn't say I got much from it. My first ever day at university, we got introduced to our lecturers. And there was one guy called Andy Ross, and he was the most experienced lecturer in the field of Edmund TV. Out of 168 of us, we'd be lucky if two of us end up working full-time in this industry. And it's unfortunately quite true, because out of all of us, there's only three of us now. 168 people at the beginning of this cl class, only three work professionally in this industry, and I'm luckily to be one of them. Unfortunately, university is not really the best route to go down if you want to work in feature films or high-end TV. The best way to do it is to get out there and try to make a career for yourself. As a university student myself, the general response made me quite concerned, given the fact I might not have needed to go to university at all to be able to pursue a career in this industry. But I also believe it gives hope to people that don't go to university or have done a degree in a completely different field. You can still start your journey and something like a degree in film and TV should not be holding you back. I definitely think that once you've got a couple of credits under you, it's a lot, lot easier. Um, it, I mean, it does depend where, you, where you're based, but assuming you're in a location where there is productions, you know, to, to, to uh, contact, production companies to contact, um, then, yeah. Because it, it demonstrates to people that you you are not a liability. So yes, and it was for me. Um, like I say, after my, I did NFTS and then I did Professor T. Um, and my third one was working for October Films, and they thought I'd got a lot more experience than I had, despite only working for a week for NFTS and a couple of days for Professor T. But um. So yeah, they people are much more willing to give you an opportunity if they can see you've already got some. Yeah, so my next role started the the like weekend af after the weekend I finished. It started on the next Monday. I learned I kind of wanted to be, I guess, the best at my role that I could be um, because it was going to make me happier in the long run. I learned to let things go. So if like yeah, there were any moments that unsettled me or was a bit much, it was quite full on. I learned to kind of just let them go at the end of the day and move on. And I think the main thing I got from it was I just found that it was what I wanted to do in life. I absolutely love the feeling on set. I love the people there, the characters you meet, the kind of magic that comes from all these different people being in the same room and it's quite playful. So for me, my, my first role will always stand out to me because it just it made me really happy. All of us are like an extra. It did take about three months to get a winner position. Then when the jobs were all over Facebook and it's a very cutthroat market, there's a lot of other people out there who are possibly the same qualifications as you, the same experience as you, but are better at, better at selling themselves. This aside, I need to stop thinking of myself as a person. I want to be in front of TV. I had to stop thinking of myself as a product I could sell to them. I was a runner for... 
about a year or so, and then I got a phone call of my friend I made while I was doing this. He says, do you fancy being a location marshal? I was like, yeah, okay, cool. What's a location marshal? Is it fellow on TV? He goes, yeah, it is. Just come, do lock-offs, set up easy ups, and just lazy on with all the other departments. Since I went to university with Phil in Norwich, and no offence to Norwich, but there's nothing really going on there in terms of the film and TV industry. However, coming to Bristol, there are far more production companies and opportunities, and in turn it's far easier to start and make a career here. It's just a case if you're willing to move to one of these cities, and if you have the financial capabilities and support to do so. Being in the right place can be very good with wanting to start. My interviewee's response is getting your first role is way harder than getting your second and subsequent roles. So when you get your first few credits and experience, from what I've gathered, your next role isn't that far away. What would you say is the best thing a 16 to 18 year old could do in their position that could benefit them later on? The best thing you can get when you're 16 to 18 is your driving license. Get your driving license and it will open so many doors because so many roles, particularly at the runner level, at the entry level, require you to be able to drive vehicles. When I started working in TV production, I didn't have a car or a driving license. I've lived in Bristol and London my whole life. I just didn't need one. Um, and luckily I always found a job and then I got to Australia and I was trying to get a job in TV production for a couple of months and it was so difficult. All the jobs I was getting interviews for didn't hire me to start with because I didn't have a driving license and I was gutted. I thought I'd messed it up and I wasn't going to be able to. I luckily did manage to get a job and once I had one I was able to kind of consistently have work and it ended up in me spending quite a lot of money and learning to drive and buying my own car in Australia. A license is the best thing you could do. You could be put up against someone with the same amount of knowledge, same amount of experience as you. But if, he ha if that other person has a license, you're not employable as much as employable as he is. The thing is, having a license is a big thing in this industry because it's not that you could be a runner driver or a driver. It's the fact you can get to locations quite easily. You can get to the Unibase quite easily. Because if it's out in the sticks, there's no public transport and it's going to cost you a lot of money in taxi. So if you're ever going to want to start a career on film and tv my first protocol is get your license driver's license driver's license when i was applying for my master's degree i posted on the facebook group asking if i should do it and if it would help me one person commented saying that in their experience a driver's license is way more important than a master's degree and well what else is there to say really <laughs> the next question was a list and i asked them what they believed was the most effective way to get roles this included university college slash A-levels, apprenticeships, social media posts, volunteering, talent pools, work experience, or just connections. I'd say the least useful is, um, is university. That's quite straightforward um, because production companies aren't interested in your education. They want to dem they, they need you to have got experience and, and demonstrate that you can do a thing. Most useful work experience um if you if you can get work experience as much as you can uh that is what will get you going places i think the most effective way of getting into television production is knowing people it's always going to be connections that being said i know you just mentioned work experience on the list i think work experience can actually be really good and i have seen people that lead them into roles from doing a few months of work experience and then or a few days or whatever it is and being good at what they're doing and then getting hired for a job. I think once you're in there and you know people, then people are so much more likely to hire you because essentially you have put a face to your name. Online and social media is the best place to get a job. I highly advise do not volunteer your time. Do not offer yourself for free. You have bills to pay. You need to live. You need to make a living. There are a lot of horrible people in the world that will take advantage of you and will make you do a lot of work and long hours just to pay you next to nothing. Contact people who have done shows that you like and then you compliment them and say, that show was great, I would love it. And and you, if you appeal to their 
ego, for want of a better word, they will like you more. Um, and they will see that you're passionate and people will give you a chance. So that's an easy one. Once you even get on set, just be nice to everybody. Don't don't be negative or down. Always be a positive, supportive person and do what you can to make everybody's life and day easier. Um, I listened to a podcast with the guy who created the Amy Winehouse documentary and he's done um, some amazing documentaries and he said within it, you have to find what makes you different. So there are different things, for example, like I, I love festivals and going out and I used to run my own night and that for me is my thing that I think would make me different or I've done lots of volunteering in between jobs when I'm trying to get jobs if I'm not getting the one that I want I'll go and volunteer for a bit and do something totally different and one of my interviews the lady just loved that I'd actually done volunteering between it so you have got to find that thing that that I guess makes you different and that p other people are going to connect with. I just want to explain and how I found these three people to be a part of this. I met Phil at university during my undergraduate degree and I simply stayed in contact with him and asked him if he was willing to take part. I got in contact with Anya because she commented on one of my Facebook posts, part of the calling for the interview, which was on a Bristol film and TV group. In this case, social media was used to find someone. And I met Jay after calling for the interview on a WhatsApp group that Phil was able to get me into, which shows that from my perspective and experience, that university was effective in making connections that allowed me to get invited into different social media groups that allowed me to make more connections as well. And as they have said, connections are one of the most important things in this industry. I also hope that the insight given by people that actually work in the industry can help others that also want to pursue a career.